No throats. Restarting again. Maybe one of those fun nights. Right, everything should be back online now. That was really, really strange. It was saying it was live here and it was okay with the frame rates after I restarted, but it still said offline on Twitch. So I've restarted again. That seems to have done the trick, although I think I may have lost a few people. Um, I can see Laurie, I think. I've not seen it like that where it locks you out completely. It's very annoying. Because on this end it was saying I was live and I was streaming, it's good frame rates, etc. etc. I wasn't dropping frames. And then um Dory was saying it was um offline and then when I checked on Twitch itself it said live 17 minutes ago I don't understand very strange huh but I think we're back now I may have lost um, iPost I was just messaging uh, iPost. I don't know if he can um, see the messages or not. Anyhow, back to where we were. So, you should be able to see the camera as well now. Is that all looking clear? Uh, I wonder if I should... Um, I think that was a bit bigger, actually. If you're only interested in that, aren't we? Oh, I'm floating above it. So, uh, we're just looking at the left-hand part of the Ice Logic bench now. Yeah. Um, so, I've got 12 LEDs on here because there's 12 data lines. So, this is just like a knock-top proto board with uh, LEDs on it so I can test the tiles right so view wise let me see um, ooh, I wonder if I can add in let me just run this hopefully it won't bring everything to a standing halt um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to crop this if I can. Uh, mm -hmm.
Now, um, how do I crop this? Let me see if I can just crop this so we can get a... Um, There's a way of cropping it on here. Mm. I'm just going to put that up in the corner. Uh, I'm sure I could crop this before. Why is it not letting me crop it? Okay, so let me open now the um, correct window. Let's make it small enough to fit in. Folks, just adding this. Right, I think we're in business now. Um, did you have to change the black edge code? Yeah, I'm going to go through that in a sec, Maureen. Uh, I was just getting the code window up now, which you should be able to see. Um, Have you got a PCF file or and my event? Well, no, I haven't, but that's one of the ones on my list. Most definitely. Hold on. Need some more liquid refreshments. Mm. That's better. Right, so. Let's look at this. So, um, which we start with. Let's look at the um, changes I've made. So, one of the things I've had to do is uh, I have to run PowerShell here because I'm just going to open um, open um, open OCD. Because I need that for GDB to connect to the ST link. Um, the configuration is almost identical to the um, um, ice core. Why is this crashing? Unable to connect to target. Hold on. It's one thing after another, is it not? Open OCD and find static deck. Uh, Okay, hold on. I haven't had this before. 
You can tell it's going to be one of those streams, can't you? ST link, target voltage, in mode, diamond. You just check. Um, the only trouble with my kind of little bodged connector, photo connector, is um, it's easy to get the uh, pins misaligned. Sorry, that froze there. Yeah. Um, oh. Everything's moved. I'll just put it back. There we go. I think we're back up. Apologies, folk. Uh, I see you updated the Black Crab repository. Yeah, just a little bit. Because I, I, all I did was um, I created a new branch. I don't know if you can see that yet. Um, so, um, Right, well, I've got the debug running, that's good. So let, let's just go through the code changes here. Uh, I haven't really changed the imports. I've added some imports here. One of the things that I did look at, Laurie, was using probe run. And I got, I had loads of issues. And then I got so far down the line. And then right at the end, I realized when I got it all compiled and stuff, that it wouldn't run under, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux anyhow because it needed lib, lib dev support. It's strange, you can actually install the lib dev libraries and stuff and it compiles. But of course when it tries to connect it can't because it's not there. And I thought, oh, that was the reason I wasn't running it before. Now you can run it under Windows. It's because I'm running it under Windows subsystem for Linux I can't do that. But I don't have my stuff set up to run under just Windows. But I, I can do that another time. Um, so I, I went back to using open OCD so there is a few more things I've added in here um, the most obvious thing here is the change in ports because this was on PB on the B port before I mean, I'll tell you what I need to do is I need to um, make this a bit bigger folks so that you can actually read it. So this is on uh, port E now. Um, I, this is the connection to the uh, uh, the ICE 40 HX chip. So this is how we program it. So we've got the reset pin, the chip select pin, the master out serial in, the SPI data, and the clock so these I had to change all of those I pretty much changed everything here and obviously because these are typeset you have to go and change any instances of the type etc um, I haven't changed the code there none of that needed changing um, that all operates normally because that's it all I'm doing is changing the pins here so the other places where I made changes it, you can see me adding the other stuff I've disabled the uh, interrupts temporarily, so I didn't want that interfering with things. So the port changes here are the mode 
LED and status LED because the RGB LED is not working I can't use it so I'm actually using some uh, pins on the header on that improvised mezzanine that I made so I can actually look at those pen pins if I need to um, but I don't have LEDs connected to those at the moment so we won't be seeing that um, here's the you know for the e-port obviously I've got the SPI which I'm bit banging at the moment so I've got my SCK my Mosey my SS I've also got my WP and hold now on the e-port so these are all on the same port which is nice um, whereas the WP and hold before were on separate ports on the ice core um, the SPI has changed so I've got uh, four data pins for the SPI and again these are on different ports uh, the DCS is on the same port it was before PV6 the SCK is on PV2 so that didn't need changing I did need to add this because we had D0 and D1 before because it was 2 bit remember uh, but we've got 4 bit on the uh, ice logic and the rest of that stuff's down here which is on a different port which is on the D port which is D0, D1 and D3 what I haven't put on there yet is the event pin we, we will need to add that um, we could add that now actually let me just look at the diagram uh, no I don't want to run either let's, let's just leave that for a moment because I'm not going to work on that straight away um, so the other thing that's now on the D port is the reset pin so I have to change that to point to PD10 so this is what's responsible for resetting the uh, ice 40 and the dump pin uh, which is also on the D pin so that's moved as well and that's for input so we can read whether it's done or not um, the extra SPI pins which I mentioned just now the rest of this is pretty much the same as it was before um, the USB pins are the same that hasn't changed none of the USB stuff has changed um, so all the setup from that point on is the same although I've added this in we don't need this let's just um, cure that for a sec uh, I was playing about because I wanted to see whether it was uh, working when I was having problems with the uh, USB I wanted to see if this was interfering so I was just um, sending out a square away so let's just get rid of that we don't need that and let's set this back down to status LED high and low this should actually be low not high so I was playing around with the status of these to see if it was changing and it was so I knew I was talking to it okay uh, so all that's the same the only thing I did add which is commented out is I've had the stuff for the RC Pro here um, but I'm not using it yet because of that problem uh, and here okay I also imported the extra libraries for the RS Pro even though we're not using it yet so we're ready to go um, with that these ones here look. so those are the main changes okay it's not a huge number of changes at this point because I don't want to actually change what it's doing I just want to make it work so now we can run that the other thing I changed here is with I changed from dual to quad um, although I'm not going to work on that right now um, I don't think there was anything else I changed that's it so we're ready to rock it should run let me just um, build it and run it okay it's connecting So as soon as I continue in here it should actually get the USB up there we go USB up and if I have a quick look in device manager
I should see another serial COM port, which I do COM6, which is where I expected it to be. Brilliant. So it's now running on the board. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing to see there because the LED is not connected, so I can't show you that to show the status. But I can assure you it is running, and um, I just heard it ping in Windows when the USB come up. And I've seen it in the USB devices, serial USB devices in the device menu, so I know it's come up. So now what I can do is uh, can I add another terminal here? That would be good. So I need to, where do I need to go? Where the hell did I put these files? I think, I think it was um, Oops. CD home. Let's just go home, shall we? Yeah. So I've actually changed some stuff here. I've written some Verilog. Uh, oh. uh, so what I did was I took the trail version and I've elongated it. I've also inverted it because the LEDs on my proto board are active high, not active low. So, um, let me open that here. So on the make file, what I've changed here is this. So the destination chip now, if you look at this, is, can you see? BG121 colon 4K rather than TQ144 uh, colon 4K because that's the chip on the logic board, it's a 121 board. Um, so I've had to change the make file for this. The other thing that I've done is I've added this trail PCF. So here I have 12 LEDs. Uh, in fact, let's just zoom in again. 12 LEDs on this proto board, uh, and these are the uh, pins they're connected to, which I worked out earlier, which I've copied and pasted into here for that current tile. So now I have 12 LEDs rather than the four I normally have with the trail. The clock is also different, the clock comes in from the STM32 on L5, so that's different as well. So I've changed that. The chip I've changed now because uh, the, the the clock frequency is the same, 25 megahertz by the way. Um, but actually, that's incorrect. I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, I'm now using 12 LEDs rather than uh, rather than before. Okay. Same again here. So I've changed that. Uh, oh. Trial, where is it? Um, trial, 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 trial. There we go. So here um, we're now bringing in 12 LEDs rather than um, uh, four. Uh, I'm also inverting these because these are active high, and. Um, We've got 11 registers now. The other thing I've done is I've 
sped this up a bit so I'm, I'm, I'm counting on bit 20 rather than bit 22 everything else is the same and I should be able to run this so anyhow if I go back to here and I do make no I need to Cool. Um, we have to do uh, cat chip. See the fun I had earlier. There we go. Cat chip bin. So it's now talking to over USB to the STM32. Voila! Look at that. Yes. So we've got uh, 12 LEDs on that tile. So there's 12 data lines that we're running the trail algorithm on. Or HDL on. Um, Laurie's asking, what clock speed are you running at? Okay, um, well, yeah, this is the odd thing. Uh, it should be 25 megahertz, but it's actually 16 megahertz. I discovered this before on the MX because of the MCO configuration in Rust. Because the, in this version of the code, I can't go in and uh, manipulate the MCO registers. And the default of the MCO register is not to use the HSC external 25 megahertz clock, but to use the internal 60 megahertz clock, which is really annoying. So um, when I go up to version three of the library, I will be able to change that to actually select from the um, HSC rather than the um, HSI, which is the internal, and then it will be running at 25 megahertz. So it's slightly slower than it would normally be but voila yeah so the board's up and running all the power is good we're programming the ice 40 from the stm32 um we haven't got any flash stuff obviously because that wasn't in black crab yet but basically we we're where we were with the black crab and the ice core which is spot on but we're on the um, ice logic. One of the, one of the reasons I went with the uh, STM32 F7 uh, and the ice on the first tile board is because I didn't have so many hoops to jump through. Because it's very similar to ice core in that respect. I mean, sure, the chips are different, but they're both from the same family. You know, both are. From the ice 40 hx and from the stm 32 f7 30 so that makes this easier it gives me less obstacles to jump over uh, which is excellent i like that yay pretty too i might need to turn down the um brightness slightly here Not that much. Me wibbly camera. Oh, that uh, deserves some hydration. So we's up and running. I've got a list as long as my arm of stuff that I've got to do. Uh, I need to prioritise. Any questions? Whilst I'm thinking what we can do next, what is the time anyhow? 8.46, crikey. So yeah, on the, just by the way, Laurie, so on the RS probe stuff, um, I'm running Rust 
um, doing the Rust builds, etc., command line builds using Windows Subsystem for Linux, where everything's, you know, cargo and everything's installed on Windows Subsystem for Linux. I did that initially because the Windows stuff was a problem. Uh, but at some point, I need to try getting the Rust stuff installed natively on Windows. I could then natively run the uh, probe run on Windows, which I can't do. Well, I, I can run it on Windows Subsystem for Linux, but when it opens the uh, um, USB dev, sorry, USB library, it comes a cropper because Windows Subsystem for Linux doesn't have the USB library. It only has, um, you know, the COM port supports. Um, so it comes a cropper when it tries to talk to the ST-Link uh, device. If I was running on Linux proper, it wouldn't be an issue. But then again, I might be having problems with OBS if I was doing that. Um, I may try getting that to work on my um, Linux workstation at one point. It'd be nice if I could um, go back and use Linux again. Although I still have to get everything working on Windows as well for Windows users. So yes, sometimes we have to make these sacrifices. I mean, I'd love to try the Mac stuff again, but I'm buggered if I'm going to pay uh, the price for a new MacBook. Those are so damn expensive. And besides, I think, you know, the platform support is a bit, uh, bit of a nightmare for certain things on the new M1s. I think once they get those sorted out, then it might be worth me investing one. You know, if I make loads of money someday. Get a nice project. Um, uh, VirtualBox VM usually works identical to Linux. Yeah, it's just a bit sluggish. That's all. Particularly if you're using a GUI editor like PyCharm. I need to write down some to do. So let's let's work out. Um, I probably already got one here. So under black crab, I should have a to-do. Right. Um, mm, it's a bit out of date. We need to add to this. Um, It's only these sections at the moment. So I'm going to here. Love the way I can summarize that. Nice logic deck. In one nice line. Despite the fact it's take me an entire week to do it. Um, so, um, test basic functionality. Well, I think we can do that. Um, so, let's just make a note of that.
Oops. Um. We've done that. Um, we need to uh, our first tile, isn't it, really? I think our first tile. With uh, oh, yeah, proto. Okay, um, let me just check the comments. So, um, my son has just bought an M1 MacBook. Cool. They're apparently very fast and very cool running, and you don't get all the fan nonsense, which is why I'd be interested in one, but they are a lot of money. Um, but I spent two grand on this. You know, two thousand dollars on this current laptop because I had the I needed the Nvidia accelerator with it because I was doing the um, machine learning stuff at the time. I'm not sure it was worth spending that much money, quite frankly, on the laptop. But there you go. Uh, I would like an M1. I might. I, I was tempted maybe to buy a Mac Mini for test purposes, an M1 mini type device Laurie saying I will probably use uh, VS Code on Ubuntu on VirtualBox VM for Rust yeah. I still prefer PyCharm I know we're saying PyCharm I mean their, their environment is like their IntelliJ environment um, I really like and I like their Rust plugins but yeah the uh, Visual Studio is a good way to go as well uh, at some point I will um, get that running as well so that we've got support for that um, when I get some of these other issues ironed out I, th I think um, VS Code is good because it, it supports the Rust Analyzer which is nice um, do you plan to make any changes or wait for any components before building any other boards? Um, I'm still waiting for some stuff. I need the LEDs. No point in me building two more boards until I've got the at least the LEDs. Which reminds me, I've got to put that order in. Damn it. I was going to do that today. I don't know if that's going to arrive before Christmas now whatever um, I've got a basket sitting at uh, LCSC ready to go that has the right LEDs in it I hope and some more USB connectors and stuff like that and a few things that I'm missing um, so I need to uh, press check out on that am I going to be able to get two more boards built or any other boards built before Christmas unlikely because um, I mean I could build another one but without the it's a pain in the ass if you don't have the LED on there for the status and if you don't have the debug connector um, have you got a 
uh, ST Link Debugger. Sorry. Just out of interest. Because you'll need it if I send you the, um, the board. Which one have you got? Have you got one of the, the ST Link 2s or, or have you gone and bought the uh, ST Link 3? I haven't got it working with ST Link 3 yet. When, when we switch over to um, maybe using the uh, uh, program that does support the ST Link 3, I believe, and seems to stack. So. V2 at the moment. Yeah, I'm just using V2 at the moment. I've got my V3 there, but I can't do that until I um, get the probe, probe RS and probe run running. I, I actually got a long way into it. It all compiled. I had everything ready before I realised how stupid I was being because I wouldn't be able to see the um, ST link from Windows Subsystem for Linux. It was a kind of oh, moment. I knew that before, you know, months ago when I first looked at our uh, program, but um, I'd completely forgotten. Ah, but my other son is buying me a V3 for Christmas. <laughs> Good son. Excellent. You've got them well trained, Laurie. I ran your previous black crab code with the V2. Black crab code with the V2. Oh, what? On, on ice core, you mean? Yeah, but this isn't that much different, you know, because of the decisions we made to use the um, STM32F7 and the uh, MICE40HX. I mean, I do need to refactor a whole bunch of stuff in the code, but for the moment it was just a simple case of changing all of the... Oh, I forgot to put this here, actually. Um, I should have actually done that change the pins Laurie says he's not in a great hurry to get the board yeah well the thing that's holding me up with well, there's, there's just two things holding me up Laurie and that's um, the LEDs and it really is a pain in the ass if you don't have that LED um, and the debug connector because running this debug thing is a Royal pain because I'm all I'm forever putting it into the mezzanine wrong because it's not a proper mezzanine board, it's just a proto board that I've adapted with a stubby mezzanine connector rather than the full tile connector. Um, I ordered them a while back the uh debug connectors, um, but they were from Ali, so you know that's lost somewhere in the Christmas post between here and China, I shouldn't wonder. Um, I'm a bit annoyed because I did have some connectors, 1.27 pitch connectors from ages ago, but as I say, I cannot find the damn things anywhere. I mean, I obviously haven't searched everywhere because I haven't found them. Normally by now I would have found something. Um, yeah, I need to have a brainwave. I may get a brainwave over the weekend. Um, but obviously you need something to be able to connect to it. And the only prob other problem I've got with this is um, even if you have the debug connector, it's like a 1.27 pitch. So from the point of view of a um, uh, 
ST-Link version 2 is not very helpful because that doesn't have um, here I'll show you what I mean so here's two things <laughs> so on the uh, On the left, oh, uh, is it my left or your left? I can show you. I've got two connectors there. One is a 0.1 pitch, one is a 0.05 inch pitch or 1.27 mil. But there's a massive difference between the two. Um, so even when I do get the debug headers, uh, you need a smaller pitch connector for it, not DuPont leads. You need something half the size. Now on the um, ST-Link version 3, that actually comes with the high density 1.27 mil pitch or 0.05 inch pitch connector. So you're fine. And that goes directly on the debug headers. That's why I chose those headers. For it, but if you're trying to do it from a um, old ST-Link version two, you're going to need some sort of adapter in order to um, connect it. Now you can get uh, all sorts of adapters on eBay and Amazon and places like that. Uh, I shall have to isolate one to make it easier for people so they know what to order, so that if they are, you know, using an earlier ST link to do their debugging. It's a good way to do it. But I mean, I was kind of um, the reason for designing uh, designing in the 0.05 inch 1.27 mil uh, debug uh, connector onto the ICE logic deck was. I really wanted to skate to where the puck was going to be rather than going backwards, you know, given that, and moving towards the um, ST Link version 3. The other reason for doing that is you also have the additional pin, the SWO, and that will become more apparent when we get into using the RS Pro. Um, what, what, what that means is we will have kind of print, print LN capabilities inside the code and that goes up through the debug through the SWO so it's a very low overhead with built-in compression and things on pro program so that you've got to um, print that to the to the terminal which is good which you can't do with the old uh, ST-Link copies that you get from China because you don't get the SWO functionality with that but you do with the ST um, ST link free um, Laurie saying I would like to get my MMIGEN QSPI working on it cool yeah well I can help with that to a degree one thing in order to make that work what I have to do is I'll have to dial down the clock rate the default clock rate for QSPI on the STM32730 with the uh, F7 HAL, uh, it defaults to 108 megahertz, which isn't going to work with your, um, you know, HDL. I nearly said in my <laughs> It's not now. It's called, of course. Um, I don't think we mentioned this last time, and we should have done. It's called. Uh, Marathon. Oh, crikey, I've forgotten it. Hold on. Let me just double check. A Marathon. Amaranth. Sorry, Amaranth. A M A R. A N T H, which is the new name for the what was formerly called N Migen, 
um, White Quark. She's finally changed the name, which is good. Uh, I didn't really know much about Amaranth. I thought I, thought, I think it was known as Pigweed, but it's actually um, really interesting. It's a um, gluten-free, um, high-protein. Um, it's like a cereal, but it's not a cereal. Um, from South America. But it's got some really interesting stories behind it. Uh, look it up. There's a really good Guardian article, actually. I read about it. Um, the history. So it's quite an interesting choice of names. Um, and obviously, I I always said that it would be better if it was renamed something not in my gym, but move away from my gym completely. Uh, I don't think uh, she had much choice anyhow because um, there was pressure uh, on her for, u re for using the name because it's trademarked. The Mygen name, I think, is trademarked by some company. I'm not going to mention their name. Anymore. <coughs> so there was some friction. So it's good to get away from that anyhow. Uh, thank you, Laurie, for posting the uh, the new... So what is that link that you sent me? Ah, I didn't want to open all the browsers. Shit. Oh yeah, that, so that's just the repo. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, right, so back to the list. Hold on, let's get rid of this. Some more. So uh, one of the first things on my list, for, or the first two things on this list that I need to add is um, uh, create. Uh, oh. PCF file and, and the other one same as well. So I need to create. Uh, have they changed the name of, um, or do they still call it a board file? Call it a file, do they? They call it board. Description or something? What did he, what does he call it? I can't remember now. Thank you, Laurie. Save me some trouble. Board definition, thank you. Oh, yes, board definition. Um, so those are fairly urgent, obviously. It's very difficult to do anything else until you've got that. Esden seemed to, or Pete, Peter. 
um, mentioned the Amaranth change on his latest stream, which I haven't watched the whole thing, but on the intro he talked about it. Um, he said that White Quark is moving more towards, you know, connection descriptions and board description, board definition stuff. So I, I need to understand what those changes um, actually mean. So I don't know how much that's changed in the actual code itself. Just have a look what it says. Four definitions for Amaranth HDL. We well, calls it. She calls it Amaranth HDL. I didn't think she used that, you know, the HDL term. I suppose it's good. It's better to go that way than, you know. Um, but some, what people sometimes mistakenly um, this term that people use I forget HTL is good so I need to add that in anyhow for ILD to logic deck uh, board definition file what else do we need on this list what else is urgent I, I do need to update the um, tile repo and stuff like that as well but that's not part of this um, I'll tell you what I might need to do is I need to look at the GPIO stuff as well and the way that's been oh I tell you what, I know what I need to do I know what's fairly important um, oh. I need to uh, in fact uh, uh, spy to use hardware um, effectively spy to use hardware before So I think I might have found a way to be able to use the hardware rather than bit banging. Currently we're bit banging the programming because of the way that we're sharing the flash and SPI slave master modes uh, between the SCM32 and the ICE40 uh, because it's ran the wrong way from the ICE from the STM32 point of view talking to the uh, ice 40 um, but I think we can reverse that there's some support for that in the uh, rust SPI logos so one of the things I need to do is refactor from the uh, soft SPI create the hard SPI version and test that so I think we can do that now that's pretty important that's a uh, good optimization um, the other thing we need to do is add flash support for uh, ice forty images. Mm. Uh, oh. mm. uh, 
that's a fairly important one and I need to we need to have a discussion about how we're going to do that I think we've had this discussion before but I can't remember what we decided for the um, ice logic deck Put Rust code in repository. Uh, the Rust code is in the repository. It's in the Black Crab repository. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Definitely need to do that. Um, I thought the Black Crab version had ice core pins. Yeah, so what I've done for the moment is I created a new branch for Black Crab called Ice Logic Deck. I think. Uh, I'll tell you, hold on. I may not have committed that yet though. Hold on. Let's show you the um isn't the status on here, it's really annoying. Um I can't show you one more if that's still running. Hold on. Um, I mean, I could commit this. Hold on. Um. <sighs> uh, should I do that? Hold on. Yes, I should. It should be okay. Let's just quickly do. That. that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um. This doesn't have the examples on it. Oh, no. That's because they're not under the same directory. Let me move this. Um, nice. Uh, nice. Um, um, sandwich. Sandwich. Uh, two, let me think uh, where the hell is black? It's on the mount, isn't it? because I'm under WSL C uh, users mm -hmm. uh,
Let me just check something. Under a WSA directory. Is there an exam plus already? Can't remember. No. Okay, I'm just committing and pushing that now, uh, Laurie. Have a quick look, so if you can see those changes. It should be just called uh, Ice Logic Deck Branch. Can you see it, Laurie? Is that now present? It should be on on the um, server now. Hold on. Yeah, it's there now. Um, so you were saying yeah so last time we were talking about flush support we were considering using DFU that, yeah that's certainly a possibility there is some rust support for a DFU library which is good um, where we just set I just need to get some water Hold on. I'm just going to mute for a sec whilst I, because the tap's really noisy when I'm in this.
back again. Sorry, I need some hydration material from H2O. Cheers, everyone. It is H2O, it's not vodka, I can assure you. Dunk. Right. Um, right, okay, so what's Laurie saying? Um, probably need to decide how to do tiles in amaranth boards. Yes, we do. Um, for doing no more. PMODS has special support. You did not follow the numbering correctly for the black ice and it's cool. Oh dear. I do apologise. How did that get twisted? Did I remove the... Um... It. I do apologise. Um, well, one advantage with tiles is I won't get them wrong, Laurie. <laughs> because they'll be right from the outset. Yeah, no, I understand. It is right. If if you if you're sharing something, you know, a standard, you need to get it right. It's been a problem from day one with P mods because people have done them differently, not just M Y G all over the place. But anyhow, yeah, I agree. Um. So yeah, I mean, for the Ice Logic board, for the tiles, the tiles are going to be similar to mix mods in some way. You know, there's, there's some empty slots that are controlled by the STM32, um, such as the MX pins, the mix signal pins, and the I squared C. Unless you're in a super tile. Super tile controls the uh, I squared C and the um, and a couple of other pins as well. The TR, the interrupt pin. Um, so and in terms of getting support, I suppose I do need to put support for P mods in. Because we will support PMODs via the PMOD adapter, super tile. So, it would be interesting how we define that. Um, I need to remind myself what the PMOD abstraction was like. I do have a um, Have an example. So, I mean, I need subdirectories for the examples for Mmigen and some Verilog 
examples as well. Uh, the ones I've got to do first is I, I need to do the seven segment one, obviously. That should be relatively trivial. And I need to do the VGA one as well. Um, external libraries. Hold on. Where did I put the boards? There we go. So yeah, I'm presuming they still use the connector construct. Although I haven't checked. Oh, okay. me. So yeah, in the, on the Black Ice MX platform for the default for the um board description uh, there's an array of connectors a list sorry of connectors is both and in there I defined six P mods and three mix mods so I guess I could define all the tiles in there. Um, there could be an optional connector called PMOD, which relies on the PMOD adapter tile. You need to use tile pin numbers so that the pin names don't change when you put the tile in a different position. Yes. I'm just trying to think what that actually means. Um, just the connector number should change. Yeah. Do you, do you have a good example? I mean, obviously, you're not impressed with the uh, Black Eyes MX platform board definition. Do you have a good definition that I can crib from for another board? I mean, I understand what you're saying about the uh, connection number changing. That makes perfect sense. How are we doing for time? I'm probably all right till 10. The Black Eyes 2 was done by White Quark and it's correct. All right, let me have a look at that. Hold on. Black Eyes 2, did you say? Right, so how has he done this? Resource. Clock. LED resources. Resource color aliases, yeah, let's see. Button resources, switch resources, the 
connects for our resource, obviously. So the way he's done connectors. Yeah, well, he didn't have to do mix mods. I had a scheme where I could share certain pins between the P mods and the mix mod definitions, but yeah, there isn't anything dramatic in there that's different. But are you saying that? It's the order that they're listed in. He's done it the right way, whereas the order I listed it in was the wrong way around. ULX3 has done this in the way around to mix mods. So each tile does have specific pin numbers that's unavoidable um, so as long as there's consistency in the order of the pin numbers that's fine but he doesn't give, you know, in P mods, he doesn't give them the numbers, the pins, names. Um, is there an example where the pins are given names, like a default template, if you like? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no. I mean, could you define a connector called a tile that has default sets of names for each pin, irrespective of the pin number, but like a template for the names? Pins always have names, but are numbers for P mods. So how would you define pins and does he define p mod somewhere else mind you p mods just have numbers so yeah. is there any is there an example that uses names as well as pin numbers i guess that's what i'm asking I wonder if I can share this. So, uh, probably not. Um, So he's saying, I think all I'm saying is that this needs some thought to get correct. I agree. Um, and we should make a go of that. Probably not this week, obviously, because we're, we're limited in time now. But maybe uh, next stream would be worth doing that. I just need to understand how you name parts of connectors as well as add the numbers is it like a tuple or something rather than just a number 
Um, let me, I'm just going to try and. I don't know if I can share this other window so that we can see what we're talking about here. Um, yeah. So if you look at this example, this is how we define the black ice too. So with each connector here, there is no name. It's just a pin. So if you're just if you're doing um, defining a connector here, can you use a tuple that has the names rather than that, or can you have a like a template? I mean, is is this special? The fact that he's using PMOD is that special? Is there a template for PMOD? I know the the lines don't have a number; they just uh, name. They just have numbers on a PMOD, but. This PMOD is special, that's because it's already defined. So the question is, how do we define it so that we have names as well as pins? I'm, I'm, I'm talking generic, generically template. I don't mean that's what it's actually called, but it's, it's like a template. It's what I'm thinking. Well, I'll just wipe the camera. Sorry. Need to look at the source code, but where is the source code for PMOD? Is that in N Mygen or is that in, um, or is there another connector example that isn't a PMOD? Something that has standard names? Because if you look above here, what he's doing with the SRAM resource, he's mixing names and pin numbers, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe that's kind of the way that you do it. I like you want to be able to interchange tiles. So just by changing the tile number, it, it just magically works, right? Um, the resources seem to have that functionality. Just not connectors, unless there's a connector that I haven't looked at from someone else. Oh, excuse me. I wonder if any of these other boards have. You know, connectors that are, um, named. All right, what does it do for? Let's have a look at the ice ice broker. That's just using theme mods. He's got semantic aliases here. There's semantic aliases for things that are on theme mods. That's kind of different from what we want, though. You can certainly create a resource. Maybe use resources to do it. I don't know if you could do it with connectors. Uh, Okay, let's have a look. What about with 
bit see is it the same what does he do with it the yeah, connectors it's just an edge connector right two rows so they certainly don't have a name so what else could we look at ECP I don't know which is a good example something that's been around for a while maybe electricity resources with subsidies it doesn't actually have connectors it's probably not a good example um, Those pins. Oh, look. But that's only single pins. That has a name. No. Well, that's, that's, that, in fact, that's not a name. That's just a pin number because it's a BGA. It's actually a CSP. Yeah. It has balls, that's why it has the, the references. Yeah, we need to work out how we're going to do it. I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I want to do the same thing. The question is, how do you use Amaranth to create a generic connector that has the same names that can be interchanged? Um, irrespective of pin numbers anyhow right um, so if there's no more questions I think I'm going to finish it there for today there's plenty of stuff to do on the list um, what happens if I change back to this now? Maybe. Um, there's plenty more here. Um, but that 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 is basically under here, under the board def definition. I'm just going to put a note with. abstract tiles is that the right way of putting it or movable let's say movable a bit more practical Right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for joining me, folks. Um, I think we might have lost my post, unfortunately, during the cock-ups. Um, it's also going to make it tricky when I put this up because there's going to be two vids rather than one. But anyhow, thank you for joining me, particularly Laurie. Um, thank you for persisting, Laurie, despite the, uh, the crapola at the start or in the middle where it disconnected and the two restarts um i probably won't be streaming next friday uh if i stream it'll be earlier in the week um so look yeah maybe wednesday I would like to try and do um, a stream next week. Maybe, hopefully Wednesday. Let's let's see how we get on. Okay.
thank you folks for joining me and uh, I will speak to you very soon. Ciao.